on Sherlock. <coughs> Where else in the world would you get a government that hides behind a Supreme Court judgment as an excuse not to have an open and informed inquiry? In no other liberal democracy would a Minister for Finance stand before the legislature and, in addressing his justification for a behind-closed-doors inquiry, refer in one form or another and no less than six times to the global international crisis. And in that same address, make no reference whatsoever to the political climate underpinning the anatomy of that crisis or the political decisions that were made which were inherent to its very character. It is extraordinary that the Commission of Investigation will not reach into the political decisions that were made domestically that gave rise to the crisis. That ministers for finance will not be subjected to, the, to examination or to be held accountable for their actions is simply ludicrous. And I am not sure if the members on the government benches are aware of just how ludicrous this sounds to the Irish people. We don't seek retribution in this party, as has been alluded to, but we are entitled to seek answers. We seek answers in a public way to questions surrounding the role of the regulator. Why was he able to ride out of Dodge City with a 600,000 payout without being subjected to an analysis of his own performance or without at least some scrutiny of his decisions? We seek answers in a public way as to why Anglo-Irish Bank continues to exist. We want to know why analysts in the City of London were baying for a kill when a substantial shareholder in Anglo could no longer cover his position. How could one individual build up a stake of 28% in Anglo through numerous contracts for difference? The hedge funds had a field day on that one, and there was no one in the regulator's office that called time on that madness. And the reason why? Well, I'm sure we will never really know why, because an open inquiry will not allow us to ask that very question. We will have to continue to read the business pages of the broadsheets to glean the knowledge that we so desperately need to make honest uh, appraisals. If there is a sound economic logic for the continuance of Anglo, then let that case be made publicly so that the people who elect us can adjudicate for themselves. As a society, we need to learn valuable lessons from this period in our economic history. We want ministers for finance to be subjected to rigorous questioning in the public interest. The only way we can achieve this is through a transparent process that stands up to political scrutiny. By not having this inquiry in public, we add to the moral turpitude that has underpinned this society for too long. We want the facts to fit the preconceptions. As long as a veil of secrecy exists, then we, do, and then we don't make the changes that are necessary to move on in a real sense.